What's up, E39 Source? Ryan Schultz here, back again. I apologize for my uh, lengthy little break from the channel here, and believe me, I have not been on break. My services here at E39 Source World Headquarters in Escondido, California are through the roof. I'm currently booking in mid to late September. I'm trying to get some help on the way. Hiring people has just been impossible uh, here in the service business, and unfortunately, I don't have the time to crank the videos out anymore. It's pretty much a six day a week, 12 to 14 hour a day thing. Anyways, uh, we are back right now. It's six o'clock on a, uh, I think today's Wednesday, and uh, it's time to get some maintenance and some care here for my own M5, the 2000. This is gonna be a different style video. It's not exactly a DIY. It's kind of a little update and just a little something, some sort of content to throw out here as, uh, as I'm crazy busy. But I've been talking in the past couple of updates, in the past several videos, and the past several months, probably over a year, about getting a new windshield. And I was waiting for the big chip, and it never happened. So I'm going to replace this windshield, and then I'm sure I'll get the big chip. I put this guy in. This is Splintax, or Genuine BMW, piece of glass, back in Ohio in 2011. So it's been 10 years. It's been about 70,000 miles since this guy went in, and I have a whole bunch of reasons. Um, why I'm, why I'm replacing it now. So first and foremost, it's a windshield that gets chipped up. I drive on the highway all the time here in Southern California at, uh, well, 80 miles an hour plus with the flow of traffic, of course. And that means that even though this glass is nearly perfectly clean right now, you can see 6,421,719 different little chips and pocks, and none of them are huge. That's probably the biggest one. It's not gonna focus for me, but right there. Uh, so you get the windshield clean, you drive into the sun, and it looks terrible. Another reason I'm going to replace the windshield is it's time to do a bunch of other stuff up here. The cowl, believe it or not, is original. 225,000 miles on the cowl, and that's the only crack in it right there. Now, I can see it's not far from cracking. It's kind of flexed a little bit. It feels kind of hard. It's not as black as it once was. So it's time to do the cowl as well. And When you do the cowl, you do the hardware. Now, I'm going you know, full Ryan. I'm going a step further, a few steps further, in fact. We are replacing the wiper arms. Why? I never use them. I don't drive this car in the rain. Well, it doesn't stay up anymore. After over 11 years of moving this up into its service position to clean the glass every single week, with the exception of the winters I stored the car in Ohio, uh, that has finally given up. So no more will it stay in service position, and that's been driving me crazy. Add into that the fact that all of these plastics are pretty much gray now and just look really bad. It is time to replace those. Up here, that's been painted a couple of times. The paint actually wore off of that a number of years ago, and fairly recently when Nate was down here, we masked everything off and I just shot it with some black paint, which has worked okay, but a new one will look better. The plastic on these wiper blades, as I've said, is just not black anymore. It doesn't look great. So new wiper arms, new wiper blades, new cowl, new glass, obviously a new seal. As far as I know, this one, well, it's original to this piece of glass, which is circa uh, 2011, as I said before. So we'll get a new seal in there. Uh, we'll check out the inside. Not much has changed in here, except the odometer. We're up to 224, 262 now and counting open up the front. We're going to replace the little side pieces of trim that are on either side um, right up here. These guys, these are original and we can kind of see the reason to replacing those right there. They're just scuffed or marred from the hood opening a billion times and they're flaking apart. Same deal on the other side and believe it or not my uh, cowl trim up there on the firewall, the firewall trim has failed again. I replaced this in 2014. I'm pretty sure I did a video series on how to do that. I've since done this a million times for customers, and I was showing a customer what they look like when they're nice. I opened the hood. I was like, well, crap, that's not nice. That's not what it's supposed to look like. It's just exceptionally brittle. So I have both pieces of that as well. And you know me, I have all of the hardware and the little clips and the spacers and the washers and the nuts and the bolts that hold all of that stuff together. So I don't think I'm forgetting anything big. I actually have... Uh, a ton of parts for this car sitting inside just waiting for me to have time to be able to put them on and I don't know when that's coming. 
But this video, we're just gonna talk a little bit about, um, well, we already have over five minutes about uh, what I'm doing here, and then I'm just gonna go through and, um, and, and kind of take everything apart. Now, I'm not a glass installer. I do mechanical work. This is a bit of an art thing to me, installing the glass and not marring the paint, getting it out, and then you've got a glue bead or some sort of butyl tape bead that goes around the perimeter. Yeah, I could probably do it, but I would rather have somebody do it that's done a hundred of them this month. So tomorrow morning, I'm taking the car down to a local shop and they're going to extract the glass and drop the new one in. Everything else I'm going to do, disassemble the cowl, remove the wipers and the A-pillars and the rear view mirror and the radar detector and the dark view, black view camera, whatever it is, I never remember, and all those trimmings. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start with that. And uh, I think we're gonna start with the cabin air boxes, which I've done a million times on video before, but for your viewing pleasure, we'll do it yet again. There's a little clip there, you squeeze the sides and you wiggle it out. Then there is a rubber gasket there that simply lifts up and off. We have the little clip here that peels back. We then hinge up the door and pull towards us. I recommend using the um, male filters and they go in like this real common that people put these upside down. You want these white strips. See, the other side doesn't have that. You want the white part to be up. So you guys can pause now and go check on your own car. Now is also a great time to break out the shot back and clean up any debris that's made its way down into the cowl area since I last did this. Next up, we've got three tabs right here. You don't really need any tools. They just pop up and you can then push that away. Then removing the box. And this honestly took me just over nine years to perfect. Obviously, I figured it out before that, but to get the installation correct took me nine years. Um, when you put these back in, you want the windshield cowl trim here to sandwich over the cabin box here. So I call it the sandwich right there where these two pieces mate. Uh, if you just put it in there uh, quickly and carelessly, you will find that the cowl trims on top or I'm sorry, the cabin box trim is on top of the cowl. And this creates a problem in the rain when you wash the car, whatever. This car doesn't get wet, but it still needs to be right. Uh, water goes from the roof over the glass, down over the cowl, and then it would dump down into your DME box, which is not great. Of course, the box is sealed, but why fill the area around the box with water? It can be a bigger problem over here. Your brake booster and, and vacuum and all that is in here. And if that fills with water, you can actually hydrolock the engine. And that's happened on a, on a few 540 owners that I know, to a few 540 owners that I know, and it's really unfortunate. So you definitely don't want that to happen. So uh, we can see that this little piece of the cowl fits out and around the cabin box. And that's just a really important installation method there. But anyways, moving on, we grab the corner here like this, we pull up and then towards the center of the engine and out. And there comes our lower cabin box. So I'll take a vacuum to that later um, and down in there later. But that's how that side comes out. It's going to be the same thing over here with the exception of the hood sensor. I recommend you're very careful with this little bracket. I actually replaced both lower cabin boxes and doors and snorkels pretty recently because mine were falling apart again. So it's the third time they've been replaced on this car. But um, do as I say, not as I do. Hold the sensor with one hand and then lift up the tab and kind of wiggle it off so you don't break this little arm that holds it. And then a, a note on the wiring here, this wire actually needs to be behind that. It fits back there, not out in front. I'm gonna take the rest of this apart and then we'll move on to the cowl and wipers. Okay, a few more minutes, the cowl is out. Um, up next, I'm just gonna peel off this piece of rubber insulation up at the top, lifts right off, and that's gonna reveal three of these clamps that are partially responsible for holding on the uh, two pieces of firewall trim. Also, we have the snorkels. I don't even bother attempting to install the snorkels in the correct position. They just don't install. Out of maybe 100 E39 M5s I've worked on at this point, maybe two of them actually fit in there. I, I remember when I first replaced these, standing in there and, and trying to line them up and they're twisting into the position and I broke the tabs off. I was so annoyed with myself. It's a design failure. They just don't fit. So just line them up as best you can. I've never noticed it be a problem. You know, as long as you've got enough of that foam there, the uh, tolerance here is about three eighths of an inch. It's pretty good. So I'm gonna pick both of those out. Then we've got those three tabs. I just use a flat head to stick under the corner and lever them up. Up next, we've got a small series of these quarter turn pieces here. 
And uh, this one I'm gonna wanna use both hands on just so I don't drop that broken piece of plastic down on top of the transmission. I'd rather not burn it up with my headers and smell it for a week. Uh, but the ones I will remove on camera are over here. They're quarter turn. We will back them out in a counterclockwise way to release them. And then they're gonna pull out straight like that. Obviously we have the one in the center there that I'm gonna do last, but since that's broken, we can actually just lift this whole piece out of here and we can see exactly how that failed. It's just the plastic crumbles. It's a thinner part of the plastic. Even the new ones that I've purchased that came directly from BMW have a build date. These are older yet. Wow, December 2000. The ones I got are from 2003. And you can see the part number right there ending in 218. But this one, this one goes there. And importantly, we have one more hiding down there in the lens flare and the shadows. But you can get right there, wiggle that one loose. Try not to drop it into the abyss. And then the entire piece here should lift out. A little note on the larger piece. So this is the wiring harness for the engine. It comes out of the DME box. It tucks up in here under the cowl. And then there's actually a bit of a, a channel in it that presses into this trim. It's got a little groove that slides into that little U-shape on the firewall trim. So we'll release that side first. And then over here, I think it's just stuck in some butyl tape. And we'll take some work in to get it unstuck. It's been in here for quite a while. And this piece actually isn't too bad, so I'm going to be careful with this one. I could resell this or reuse it. It's not damaged. Upon closer inspection, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this piece. So I may well just clean it up and reuse it. This has a production date of February 2002. Part number's right there, same as the other one, ends in 217. These guys are about 200 bucks a piece these days. So maybe I'll keep my other one for next time. There's nothing wrong with this one. With the firewall trim out of there, we've got a nice clean look at the cowl. Of course, before we can get too far into the cowl, we need to go ahead and remove the wipers. There's a great tool that I picked off. I think it's from Amazon. It could have been eBay. I'll try to leave a link down below. It's not at all a wiper removal tool. It's just a kind of a bit of a gear puller, but it works really well to uh, easily get the wipers off. Uh, but firstly, we're going to take off these little spats on the side. And they've got kind of a tricky installation method, but these are so screwed up. We can just pick them up and pretty much rip them out of here. And they come off like this. These guys are maybe $25 a piece. I'm sure these are original. January of 2000, yes sir. This is a February 2000 car. So that original piece of the car, there aren't many of these left anymore, but it lived a good life. Let's leave it at that. Great time to clean up in there too. Moving on to the wipers, there's a few pieces we need to remove first. There's a total of three bolts that hold the wiper arms onto the actual wiper motor and linkage, which is down below. And we can see some of that linkage still with Ohio salt corrosion on it. No, that's not rust down there, it's just dirt. I'll clean that up later. Um, the two easier ones are gonna be right here. Those posts have a little slot over there at nine o'clock. And if you use a flathead screwdriver or a pick or something small, you can get in there and carefully just pop those covers off. That will uh, reveal what I believe are 13 millimeter nuts, which we can just use a, a ratchet or something to, to remove. Over here, it's just got the one, and I think that might be a 15 or 16 millimeter head. It's larger. And this piece of trim here, I'm going to try to be careful with it, but no promises I don't destroy it here. I have a new one. I think it's going to lift off from this side. And this thing's probably never been, well, hasn't been removed in at least 10 years. Okay, so it just kind of pried away like that. It's got some tabs over there, manufacture date of 1999. So that's original. I don't think I broke it, but we see another big piece of the paint flaked off on these old wiper arms, which I have several sets of used E39 wiper arms. I don't need any more, but that's how aluminum kind of corrodes like that. With that out of the way, we see some hardware here, and we beautifully see that BMW stamped the torque spec right onto the wiper arm. I absolutely love that. I think they should do it with more of their parts and uh, pretty much anything where they can fit a little thing like that. They did it here on the uh, oil filter housing, 25 newton meters. I can convert to foot pounds, that's fine. Just print it on there. It saves me a lot of work online. Um, so we've revealed what looks like a 16 mil there. We also have that weird spacer piece right below the nut, that washer. So I have all the hardware, but we're going to want to kind of uh, keep track of how those come apart. Under these push plugs here, they are indeed 13 millimeters. I've already buzzed them off with the gun. They're a flange nut. 
that has uh, the little washer there is a rotating flange. So with those off, you know, you look at that and you think, oh, well, you just pry the wiper away. And by the way, we have a torque spec here of 25 Newton meters, which is about 18 and a half foot pounds. Uh, if they were put on there yesterday, I'm sure you could just pry them off, but these have been on here for at least a decade, so that's not going to be the case. And now comes the time when I'll show you the nifty tool. Here we go. I imagine that's the brand US Pro Thin Two Job Bearing Puller. That's item number 5152. Looks like this, and there's a UPC if that helps at all. Anyways, I'll get this thing open and show you how it works. Okay, so a simple bearing puller like this. It's got this little pointy bit at the end that we can just pull off. We don't need that for this application. The flat part is what's going to uh, push against the wiper linkage. Now, these um, hands here, see how they're kind of gripping towards the inside? We can loosen these bolts over here, rotate them 180 degrees, and they can pull on the outside too. For today's application, we're going to use the inside. And if I recall, I wrote it on here, but it's worn off. That's a 14 millimeter driver. Okay, here's the tool all set up and ready for action. You can see we've just gripped the wiper arms there with the uh, tool arms. And then since we, we don't need that pointy part, we just tighten it down all the way. Now the problem, of course, could be I can only rotate that about two threads. I'm betting that's going to be enough. If the tool jams up, it makes me look like an idiot, but then we'll have to put something in between the wiper linkage and motor there and the tool itself. But uh, this is going to be really hard to film. I'm going to try to prop up the camera. We'll see what we can do. Okay, so right as the tool jammed up, it looks like it did pull the arm off, which is what I wanted to happen. So we remove the tool and there we go. I'm free. Doesn't get much easier than that. Just uh, having the gun and, and the right tool for this job. First time I did this on my E46, um, oh, didn't get all the way on this side. There we go, we just pull it up. I used pry tools and I ended up damaging the windshield. And when I say damaging, I mean cracking the windshield, so I had to replace the windshield. Anyways, here's the uh, the old wipers. I'm sure these are original. It looks like a, wow, 98. I can barely read that. Better on camera. Yeah, 1998 wipers, the corrosion. Uh, I don't know if what happens with the spring or the linkage, but... These wiper blades have never even been driven in the rain before. I replaced them in about 2017 before I moved here to San Diego. Um, and I will do it again just because why put old parts on new parts. I see we're actually missing some pieces here. Or are we? Yeah, they're supposed to be kind of grommets that go around that. And we'll look at the parts explosion tomorrow when I reassemble all this. But there are definitely some pieces missing. Over here, it's the same deal. It's just a different head type. It's about a 16, so do that next okay nut came off no problem washer seems tight you might be able to just oh this one i'm not even going to need the puller on look at that it came right free so I'll move this so we'll move this guy out of the way and then get a better look at yet another piece of hardware uh, that is here and this guy probably need the bearing puller for that that's pressed down onto the wiper arm and to get the cowl off we're going to need to pull that off and this one still has its little plastic washer thing back there that this side should have and will have tomorrow. Uh, as I said, I have never taken this apart. When I did this in 2011, I took it to a, a glass shop. I dropped the car off and, you know, 800 bucks later, we had a new piece of glass in. This time around, I'm doing most of it myself for a few reasons. One, to save costs, and two, I just don't trust anyone else. Speaking of glass, um, of course, I'm going with the genuine BMW glass, and that's because I got an amazing deal on it through my local BMW dealer. This is the part number for the 2002 and 2003 E39 windshield glass. Why did it change? In the year 2002, BMW added automatic headlights, which changed a sensor installed onto the glass up here by the rear view mirror before it was called a rain sensor after it was called a rain light sensor. And you may remember that I retrofit automatic headlights to this car about, about a year ago or something like that, as you can see by my 11 o'clock automatic headlight switch position there. So I have installed a different prism on the glass and a different sensor um, reasonably well. There's a bubble in there. I don't think it really affects functionality very much. They work really perfectly fine, but it'll be nice to have a new windshield. The windshields come with the prism, but the prism's actually included on the glass, so. As we look at this one, there are no bubbles, but um, 
if you have a 2000 or 2001 car and you do not plan on retrofitting the lights, you're going to want to use the different glass that has the old style prism for your rain only sensor. On this guy, I used the tool by hand. There just wasn't enough room to get the gun in there with it set up, and I don't want to damage the hood. A few good clicks, and it popped loose. If I need to check the orientation on this guy later, I suppose I can check the video because I did not take a photo of that. But it presses down. It's got some splines in there that mesh with some splines on that piece as well. So while we're here, I'm going to go ahead and pull out, if I can, a couple of things. It's got this plastic washer thing, and then below that is kind of a kind of a foam spacer, and they don't seem to want to move. It, it, it does, it's coming off, there we go. So these, these pieces should be on the other side, like I've said, I will install them tomorrow. Up next is the cowl. Cowl comes out pretty easily. It has a handful of these plastic fasteners. Now they've got a Phillips head in there, like a Phillips head cut into the plastic. And while they are threaded, that really doesn't function, not even on the new clips. So kind of what I've done in the past is use your Phillips head just to get them out. And I'm replacing all these, they're like a dollar. Uh, so use your Phillips head to get them uh, released just enough that you can fit a pry tool under there. You know, I'm talking only about a turn or two because we're just gonna pry these things out and throw them right in the trash. You can keep screwing it if you want to, but as you see, the more you go, it just falls back in. All right, with them out a little bit, I'm gonna use a tool like this. Go in there and just pry that part out. Uh, the rest, like the rest of this fastener will just come with the cowl. So the entire fastener looks like this. So at this point, we just lift up and it peels away, snakes in between the hood struts. And here is the old cowl, like that. At this point, we can see a lot of filth and debris and just years of gunk and grime that you can't access on the lower portion of the glass. So if you care, now's a good time to do that and clean it up. Suppose I will. The last thing that we're going to remove here on the outside of the car are these grommets. And the grommets press down into the holes where we just took the fasteners. Uh, some of them, the easier ones, you can actually get on the other side and just kind of push them and maybe with the help of a screwdriver or some needle nose pliers being careful not to damage the paint actually we'll just pull it through from the bottom so those are the easiest ones to remove and that's going to be kind of the majority of them although some of them you just can't access from the back like these two over here and those will need to be a little bit more careful unless you don't care about losing them down into the abyss of the chassis i don't like that it doesn't sit well with me so i'll find a way to carefully remove those two And in here, what do we have here? Is this a walnut? Wow, that's been there a while. All right, real basic cleanup later. I'll do a better job tomorrow when my back's not killing me, but uh, actually looks pretty cool. If I never drove this car in any real world situations, I would leave the wipers off. It's way cleaner looking. The last thing we've got to do on the outside of the car tonight is the front window seal or the gasket. People ask me all the time, do you have to take the windshield out to do it? And if I do it wrong, will it leak? And the answers to those questions are the same. It's no. Uh, this does not create a watertight seal. It does three things. It gives the air, it gives the, the water somewhere a nice clean channel to run down the side here. It's going to run over that little corner piece we took out before, over the cowl properly sandwiched hopefully into the cabin box and then out the bottom of the car safely in the fender liner area that, that's number one number two it gives the air a nice clean smooth uh, channel to pass over here and hopefully not make too much noise and thing number three it just keeps debris and a bunch of crap out of that area to allow for a nice clean water flow um, your, your sealing element is actually the way the glass is installed in the car with whatever glue or butyl tape they use to affix it in the car that's where your waterproof connection needs to come from I'm going to attempt to do this by hand without any tools, just by peeling it away down here in the bottom. This is all one piece, and there's a metal in here that I'm now destroying by pulling it. Anytime you replace the, the glass, you need to be replacing the seal as well. But the seal pulls up and out of the way. Um, when installing it, it's got this little channel like this, and that needs to go around the glass. So if I weren't replacing the windshield and simply uh, the seal, at this point, I would want to go in there and clean out as much goop and debris and extra glue and you know whatever's in here clean out as much of that as possible now the corners don't have any rubber in it so if i pull very hard there it's just going to break which i'm going to try to avoid because i'd like to remove this in one piece 
or at least two pieces. So see how it's holding its position now because there's actually metal in there. Okay, let's move on to inside the car. Boy, is this weird. I'm looking down at my brake fluid reservoir from getting in the car, funky. Uh, anyways, a couple things we gotta do in here. We gotta remove the A-pillar trims just because I think I probably should. Obviously, we're gonna pull the Valentine One detector, which I'll do when I get home tonight or when I drop the car off tomorrow. That is super simple. I just pull down on that metal tab there and it breaks the uh, suction cups off the glass. The rear view mirror will come off really easily. Uh, the only thing I'm gonna do here tonight is probably just removing the, uh, the black surround over there. It's a split piece, it splits down the middle. So any hopefully blunt objects, so we don't mar the plastic that you put in between them. You might even just be able to grab the sides of it and kind of pull and twist, they will pop apart. And then I've got the dark view camera over here, which I may also remove tomorrow as well, or I'll just get it disconnected tonight. And the other A pillar. Other than that, I have a California fast track little QR thing down there, or little whatever you call it, NFC. Um, that'll just go with the windshield. And then when I had this car ceramic coated, they put some C-Quartz ceramic stickers up there. I have replacements, uh, or I'll just leave them off. It'll be cleaner without them. So um, I guess let's start with the A-pillars. There's these little covers here. It says HPS. Those guys will pop right off. Don't lose these. They don't seem to have part numbers. I've never been able to find them. I only have used ones. Sorry for the poor camera work there. I'm looking at the Alcantara so I don't damage it. But you just pry it away. It peels out. And then you're going to find a Torx 30 screw in there. That's a really long screw. I don't think we can get the gun in here. I think we've got to do that by hand. Okay, I was actually able to get the gun in there. And I'm sorry, it's not a T30. That's a T25. I used quarter drive. Uh, tools, little six-inch extension. And buzz this guy out of here. It's a very, very self-tapping head which will make installation a little bit easier. We've gotta be careful when removing these. These A-pillars are really nice. They don't have too much of a bulge in the middle. Some of them really stick out. All of the tabs break on that. It's just the way it is. Um, I'm gonna to try to reacquaint myself with how to do that. I haven't pulled any of these in a little while. Uh, that's the only fastener holding them in. From this point on, it's pretty much just some clips that we'll need to be careful with. Okay, not too bad. They kind of fold out. So we start here on the inside and do a little bit of a twist that way. Then they just peel away. And at that point, you just wiggle and pull gently. And they come out like this, revealing a few things. Um, we see a lot of wiring there in that sheathing. This plastic tube is a sunroof drain. And then this would be our curtain airbag that I hope to never see any more of the mat. Here's the uh, rear view mirror surround trim. As I said, it's split down the middle and it's just got some plastic clips that uh, hold it together like that. I guess I am gonna go ahead and remove the mirror and other stuff now. Um, it's kind of an early drop off tomorrow. I'm not gonna wanna mess with it then. So the mirror itself, you just grab the, the back part of it where it actually attaches to the glass and then just rotate it about 45 degrees, maybe having to adjust the mirror so it doesn't hit any stuff. It makes kind of a nasty noise as it pops off. And then there's a six pin electrical connection in there. It's got that little tab. You squeeze the tab and pull the connector out. I was wrong about the six pin. It's more of a 10 pin, it's a 10 pin connector. Then the last one here is a four pin connector that plugs into our RLS or RS, rain light or rain sensor. It unplugs like that, simple little four pin connector. And then this sensor itself, I think we're gonna need a flathead screwdriver and at the top of it, I'll, I'll be able to show you a little bit more easily when it's out of the car, but this little piece pushes down and there's an identical piece over here that pushes down. And then the whole thing will just wiggle off the glass, leaving behind the prism that will be sold or destroyed with this windshield later. Here's the rain light sensor. Talked about pushing those tabs down right at the far right and far left. I did that and as those move, they kind of open a channel that allows it to fall off right here, 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 and here. And if I close this side, you'll see that channel no longer aligns and that's why it wouldn't come off when it's closed. Last thing I had to go there was the camera. So that's off, disconnected. I'm gonna leave the adhesive because why not? Mirror's gone, V1 is gone, A pillars are gone. We're ready to go. Is there a better car? 
Is there a car you can just load your windshield in the back seat that isn't a Tahoe or Suburban or something crazy like that? That's nuts. I love that. With that, we're ready to go. I'm ready to go home, eat some dinner, take a shower, and rest a couple hours. Tomorrow morning, we'll get up early. Um, the only parts going back on here are probably that firewall trim, air boxes. I'm going to replace all of the hardware because that's what I do. Believe it or not, I'm going to reuse the air filters. They're nice and clean, so we'll keep those and the lids and then the interior stuff over there. But, oh, I've got to clean up the shop, get out of here. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow, install day. Okay, so I don't have uh, cabin air boxes or a snorkel, or like the snorkels or any of that stuff out under the hood. And I thought maybe I'd have to turn off the climate control. No, uh, it works fine. If I stop for a while, it kind of smells like oil, but that's probably because there's some drop of oil seeping out of something somewhere, even though this car doesn't really leak very much from the engine. But listen. It's loud, it's so loud because all that plastic isn't there to absorb that. Plus the split fold seats are open to accommodate the windshield in the back. So we get a lot of exhaust noise from the back. And then I think I'm actually hearing like header. I can hear all this head noise at higher RPMs on or off throttle. So I'm pretty sure I'm hearing the air of each cylinder exhaust stroke hitting into the, the exhaust manifold walls, which is kind of cool. You know, I don't want it to sound like that permanently, but. I miss this car. Good morning, E39 source. Today is uh, Wednesday, Thursday. Today's Thursday. We've got a new genuine BMW sticker in the middle of my freshly installed windshield and I'm sweating every minute before I get this thing filmed. Uh, driving without any sort of protection on it, it's gonna get some microchips in it. Anyways, installation seemed to, uh, to have gone really well. It's 250 bucks to install just the glass and the seal done by a shop here in San Diego. Um, took the car for about an hour and a half and did a really clean job. They said they looked up the factory spec for the distance between uh, the glass up at the roof so everything should line up really well and they used factory adhesive. So I appreciate that. So far so good. I'll give you a better look outside when we get up to E39 Source in Escondido. We'll be there in just a few minutes. If anybody wondered what the windshield wipers look like without any wipers actually attached, it's, it's like this. Pretty cool. Okay, I've got the firewall trim and the cowl back on. We're gonna make a little note here on a 2000 car. Uh, the part number for the cowl ends in 292. It's the identical part number to what I took off, which was original, manufactured January of 20, well, of 2000. Uh, this one is uh, the same part number, but newer. Now the difference is here with these holes. See this little raised black mark? That's where the hole in the chassis is that I just put a new grommet is in. But this cap is plugging the hole in the cowl trim. So I suppose for 2001, they made the holes more evenly spaced at a six or eight inch increment. Uh, but originally the 2000 cars had this short little gap and then a fastener and then a big gap. So there is a cover plug for that. It's about five bucks. Part number ends in 023 and it doesn't seem to affect how it holds in there. It just makes it look better by covering that up. Uh, the cowl comes with these little washer things over here. So the next thing are gonna be some plastic washers that just sit on top of those. There's two of one kind, which I imagine will go here, one of another kind, which will go over there. Okay, we're making progress. I did replace just this side of the firewall trim. I cleaned that one up, put it back, three tabs on top, four locking screws that went in pretty well. We already talked about the cowl. I've got the wipers on there with the new hardware with some fresh Bosch brand wiper blades. Before I, I actually have torqued them down already, but before I put the beauty caps and the beauty covers on, I'm gonna run them and make sure that they're returning to the same position and running their full range of motion well. We wanna make sure it gets all the way over to that corner. I peeled off the stickers. The part number sticker came off really easily. The one that said void if removed, that one was a pain, had to use Goo Gone. And then there was another sticker. You can see the circle right there. So uh, obviously we'll be doing a, a cleanup here when we're done. You can see the tape line over there. Um, overall, I'm really happy with the install. The seal's nice and tight and even. I don't see any areas where it was damaged during installation and it's really easy to damage the seal during installation. Right now I'm putting these guys in. These are about a $30 investment. Take a look on your E39s. Um, most of these look really bad and if they've ever been out before, chances are they've been installed um, 
reinstalled uh, improperly. So right there, see that groove right there by my thumb? That groove fits along here. So this edge that I'm rubbing is where that groove is. And the little part of the chassis here, part of the fender, uh, the sheet metal there actually fits in there and this should hug and tuck really well. And then over here, the piece we're talking about actually sits on top of the little a little sleeve there that's part of the window seal. But then most importantly, we wanna make sure that we've got a part that's coming on the inside of the cowl here. And that's going to divert water through our water passages. And you know, if you didn't have your sandwich, as we called it in yesterday's segments, if you didn't have your sandwich correct here with your lower cabin box, you'd be dumping all of that water down here, which is fine. But then here, it's gonna start draining into this and your engine computer. And if it's an automatic transmission, standard five series, that lives in there and you just don't want that. So it's worth taking the time to make sure these parts are not only in good condition, but more improperly installed well. So we'll get a look over here. So we looked at the groove, right? There's the groove. It's this, this sharp piece of sheet metal that I could cut myself on if I wanted to. Um, it, it fits in there and tucks under there. And then talking about installation, it's kind of impossible to do on camera with one hand, but this just gets shoved down in there, essentially. And I think you're better off to kind of push it up. If you want to use some sort of lubrication, you can. Some silicone spray, maybe some sort of rubberized plastic lubrication. So you see how it goes up in the corner and then we can kind of just push down and feel for that lip. And sometimes you'll even need to get a little screwdriver and, and kind of pick up the corner here, which I'm really struggling to do without the tool. But you can peel up the corner and look in there and make sure that the rubber is lipped around the sheet metal. And then on the inside, where are we? On the inside, yeah, we wanted, we wanted to do that first because the, the cowl's got this little ear on it, that little tab. So I'm probably gonna have to remove that again and slide this down so this part is on the outside, but this needs to be on the inside. Okay, we're set. We got the main water channel draining on the inside of the cowl. We're tucked under the sheet metal there. Sorry for the dirty hinge. It's impossible to get in there and clean that, but that's a properly installed segment. Believe it or not, I actually got that little snorkel kind of clipped in. If it lines up, great. That'll be the first time I've been able to do this right forever and forever. If not, I'll just put it back in there how it's been for the last 10 years. I'm gonna do a quick clip on putting the lower cabin box back in. I know I talked about it yesterday, but I'll do it on camera. So I, I start, you know, lever the inside up, bring it in about that angle. And we're gonna start back in that corner and make sure we get our sandwich right. And it's a lot easier with the second hand here, but lift that cowl up over the cabin box and then push it down. The drain here is, actually goes into the fender, so make sure that seats. Then I'm gonna have to kind of kick this back a little bit out of the way, and we're just gonna pivot the whole thing downwards, taking care that the little tabs that are part of the cowl actually fit up through slats in the cabin boxes and acts as a hinging point for the lid. So I'm talking about those tabs right there. We'll slide up through the slats in the lower box then we'll rotate the whole thing down. I'll need a second hand here into position and we can guide that stud on the chassis up through this hole. For fitment of the wipers here, um, pretty much just spray a bunch of water on the window or something to act as a lubricant so we don't scratch up the glass and then run the wipers a few times. You should see it come all the way perpendicular here with the A-pillar and with the end of the glass and the seal. And then when it returns to its home position, I like to find the blade there right about half an inch into the black. Does that make sense? We have clear and then we've got the dots and then we've got the solid black. So right there. And then on the other side, I think we've got about an inch and uh, maybe a little bit less than an inch. I think that's pretty good. I'm sure there's some official spec I could get out and measure in microns, but this is absolutely fine. These brand new wiper blades just moved more now about 10 rotations than they will over the next five years. All right, guys, there's one piece left. That's the dark view or black view. I never remember what it is. Um, camera that I've got up here, dash cam. You can just see the wires for it there. So I need a new sticky pad for that. It's at home. I'm gonna head home now. It's the end of uh, today, the end of Thursday. And couldn't be much happier with this. I can see from here, it's a nice, clean, smooth piece of glass instead of one that's just riddled with pitting. And um, 
all the fresh plastics up here, the fresh matte plastics. Oh, we're suckers for that. Uh, the last part of this video will come on Monday, taking the car in for Car Pro Reload. It was ceramic coated just a year ago, so it's time for a reload application. They're going to touch up a few things uh, paint chip wise when they did the, the initial ceramic coating. The paint shop was closed and you can't buy Silverstone one touch up paint from BMW anymore. And the one that I bought 10 years ago has turned to Le Mans. It's way too dark. So finally the shop's back open. We ordered the paint in a somewhat post COVID world. We're going to do that, the reload. And then lastly, there's some sort of a film. I'll give you more product details later that my guy over there highly recommends we do. So we get UV protection and we get some stone chip blockage or at least some help for stone chip blockage on the glass. It's applied to the outside. Uh, it's legal. And I'll let you know what that looks like. Oh, and how could I forget? Finally, no more bubbles here for the rain light sensor. Of course, the new windshield comes with a new prism. So now we've got a perfect fitment. Okay, it's Friday, the end of the next week. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video here. The windshield's done and installed. As you saw, the, the film is on. Um, it's a S-Tech Dino Shield windshield film that I was wrong about the heat rejection. It does not yet offer that property, but it does give UV protection at 99% and some stone chip. It's got the self-healing qualities. Um, it has not fully cured yet. I can still see a couple imperfections that I'll have to have uh, fixed if they don't go away, but I, I don't think that's gonna be a problem. Uh, I don't notice any ill effects wearing polarized sunglasses while driving. Um, the radar and rain sensor and light sensor work fine with it on there. So, so far so good. Couldn't be happier. I've been putting this off a long time. It's finally done. We're cleaning up the shop here, headed home for the weekend, and I'm flying out to Hawaii tomorrow morning. So by the time you guys see this, I'm finally on vacation. I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.